See, as long as the stock does not move, these options, all of these, op these options will continue to decline in price if they have extrinsic value. Now, the prices of the options, these are called in-the-money options. The in-the-money options have some component of what they call extrinsic value and some component of intrinsic value. And the way you can determine intrinsic and extrinsic value is simply by taking the strike price of the option. In this case, we're taking a look at the uh, 20, the May 20 calls, and their price at $7.40. On these 20 calls, if you add the 20, um, if you add the strike price to the price of the call, you get $27.40. At the mid price, you're probably talking about closer to $27.25, uh, $27 which is exactly the price of a current stock. So you could say that. <clears throat> this call option has no intrinsic value. In fact, if we look under extrinsic value, you can see that the, it is actually zero. The, 20, the closer you get to the at the money or the actual price strike price of the of the uh, stock, you can see that there is in fact some extrinsic value left. There is some time value left in that option, and that time value is basically saying that hey, you know what? We do have three or four weeks before expiration, so it, the price of the option may actually increase to the point where it might be actually further in the money. What is our objective, though? Okay, this is just, I mean, this is just a very brief. You should have already a basic understanding of options. I probably haven't told you anything new, or maybe I have, I don't know, but, but depending on your experience. The important thing to remember, though, is that when we trade for monthly income, the stock cannot be in two places at one time. The ad expiration, we're going to make money on one side or the other. And that's an important distinction to make because we make money whether the stock goes up or down. Now, the types of vehicles that we use in order to trade uh, options on the, on the uh, exchanges are normally going to be, and I'll go through all those with you, um, in the next series here in portfolio building. What we're going to be using are adjustments. Adjustments are everything because as I said prices fluctuate and that's one inviolate rule of the market. Prices will fluctuate. We don't care if they go up or down but they do fluctuate. There's a number, <laughs> there's actually, there's, two, there's a couple of rules of the option markets, and that is that um, I, the, the two I've already told you. The third one is don't lose money. <laughs> okay, so yes, the rules are, yeah, prices fluctuate, option expire, options expire at a date in the future, and the third rule is don't lose money. So in order not to lose money, many times we have to do adjustments to our original positions, and this is where a lot of option players make a mistake. They do not adjust their positions. They put a position on, uh, they believe that they can just keep it on there until expiration. Well, they forgot about the other rule of the market, and that is prices will fluctuate. Options expire, but they also fluctuate. So if you get into a position, um, and a lot of option players do this, they just put positions on and they forget about them, and they don't even look at them until they have a loss. And then it's too late to do any t type of adjustment to that position because they're already too far gone. Our goal is to monitor your positions, put these positions on, and then we will show you exactly what you need to do in order to adjust the positions. And that's where the majority of the real profits come in this business. Because, you know, what happens to a business when it's not making money all of a sudden? Well, it, just like this, if we're not making money, then we have to take a look at the source of the problem and adjust our strategy in order to take advantage of new market conditions. And that's exactly what any business has to do. Any business who is not in a profitable position has to take a look at their business model and exactly what we do in our business of trading. And that's why it really is a business, because we manage by numbers. And that's what all good big businesses do. They manage by numbers. So now this is an aggregate position of our demonstration account for the purpose of these videos. You will see this throughout all the videos that we've uh, that we're creating. 
on this strategy. We start out in a cash position, but I also want to show you what the profit potential of having more contracts. Eventually, as you get experience in this type of trading as a business, you're going to be able to have a great deal of confidence in your ability to adjust trades over time. I suggest that you begin with paper trading. Now, the Thinkorswim platform has a paper trading account that you can set up for free. It looks identical to this. The only thing that uh, is different is if you look up, up in this top left-hand corner, this is a live trading account. It has a red symbol here with the Thinkorswim symbol and logo. If you have a paper trading account open, this is a green symbol. But the platform is absolutely identical. Everything is exactly the same. You can enter trades, you can adjust trades, you can look at charts, you can monitor your account. Uh, you can do everything that you can in a paper trading account with Thinkorswim as you can in this account.